Today on Exploring Scotland's History, we're going to take a look at Kilmartin Parish Church. What we see today was designed by James Gordon Davis, who also worked on places like Kilmory Castle and Duntroon. It was built in 1835, although earlier churches have existed on the site. Kilmartin comes from St Martin of Tours, a 4th century saint, who St Columba honoured at Mass on Iona. This is the war memorial gate of the church. Interestingly, it's dated 1919, a very usual thing. In Scotland after the war, the Scottish recognised 28th of June 1919 instead of the 11th of November 1918 as the end of the war. So the Scottish believed the signing of the Treaty of Versailles ended the war and a lot of other people think it was Armistice Day on the 11th of November. We now enter the mausoleum of Neil Campbell, Bishop of Argyll. It is now used as a lapidarium. Here we've got some grave slabs dating from, I think it's from the 1200s, and they kind of work their way around uh, in, in age, so there are newer ones around this side. Well, some of them have got some quite new writing on them, which seems a bit odd. This impressive cross was constructed about AD 900 under direction of local clerics. Very intricate designs. At some point one of the arms has been snapped off. This is one of the most magnificent medieval stone crosses in the West Highlands. Carved in 1200. One side is the robed Christ and the other side is the crucified Christ. is quite an unusual cross, considered to be 15th century. What is unusual about it are the little scrolls at each side to hold the cross up. The style of stonemasonry has been attributed to the stonemasons of Loch Awe at the time. The Church of Scotland minister who served here between 1655 and 1687 was John Duncanson. His son, Major Robert Duncanson, was a key figure with the Argyles at the Glencoe Massacre. And I've just noticed this uh, lovely tribute to Neil Malcolm of Poltalloc uh, for his unremitting exertions during a long and active life to advance the welfare and improvement of the land of his fathers. We'll discuss that later. The church is quite plain inside, but up here we have the Malcolm of Poltalloch loft. Hmm, it's funny how the lairds have to be lofty compared to everyone else. Oh well. Me 
these headstones here were they're, they're old headstones from the 14th, 15th century or grave slabs uh, after the Malcolms bought this area from the Campbells in I think it was 1827 uh, they took a whole bunch of these old uh, tombstones and marked them up as Poltalloch after their estate uh, who they, who's they were originally? We don't know but uh, they've claimed them as their own <laughs> <laughs>